Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ. Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Zab. To my left, I have Officer Abdon. Hey, today we're going to talk about what things cause you to sin, right? Uh, it's a process uh, to get you to sin sometimes, right? You don't just start off at sin. You will make justifications, excuses. Certain things happen throughout life, whether you have a difficult time at work or at home with your kids, whatever it might be, those different things happen and they trigger you to sin. So we want to look at that process and how that happened. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. The book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Yeah. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So the rudiments of the world, those different things that's within you, the rudiments, even though you have repented, it's still things within you. It's rudiments that's left there that cause you to say, you know what, I have the right to sin. When certain things happen in life and you're triggered, you smell something that, you know, a certain narcotic you might have used to use, or, you know, alcoholism, or pornography, or lust, or the love of money, those different things happen throughout your life where you see certain things or different um, temptations are laid out before you and you you'll find an excuse why you can now sin right those things have now triggered you to sin let's look at Sirach chapter 2 verse 1 those things have now triggered you to sin the book of Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1 yeah my son if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So if you're going to serve the Lord, you got to understand it's going to be difficult, right? Because you are repenting. You're going from a, from a man or a woman that was, you know, doing whatever they wanted to do. Now that you have repented, now there's different restrictions in place for you to not sin. And you got to think about two to three steps before that on what might cause you to sin, what might trigger you to sin. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. The book of first Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Yeah. Now all these things happen unto them for examples and that and they are written for our ad, ad, admission, admonition. admonition. Yeah. All those different things, all those different things that we read through the through the Bible. Those are examples for us to learn from. We're supposed to look at those things and say, all right, this brother failed here. This sister failed here. Or this brother made a positive choice. This brother made a negative choice. And this was the outcome of it. These things are written for that reason. Let's go to James chapter one. And verse 13. Book of James, chapter 1 and verse 13. Yep. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. So this man, right, whoever this man or this woman, what's happening is that there are different temptations out there, different things that have been put before him or before her where they say, you know what, I am now justified to sin. Right. And you have to make a choice right there before you get to the sin. You get you at the trigger. You at the process before you let the two to three steps before you get to the sin. But these different things are happening in your mind. You say, you know what? I can sin. Come on. Neither tempted he any man, mm -hmm. but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So within you, you got to say, you know what? This thing is triggering me, but I got to be able to counterbalance it now. Come on. And enticed. Mm -hmm. Then when lust have conceived. You see that? The lust has conceived. Yet within your mind, you have now justified yourself for why you can sin. Come on. It bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And that's what happens, right? Within, you got to understand that the overall, the end result is going to be death for you. That's what's going to. It start off is. I'm I'm bored or I'm lazy. I don't have nothing to do. And then that idleness or that lust or whatever it might be, you now have made excuses for it because you was bored, because you smelled something, because you was around alcoholism or whatever it might be. And those different things have happened and they say, you know what, now I'm justified. Now I can sin. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 29. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 29. Yep. Oh, that they were wise. That they understood this, mm -hmm. that they would consider their latter end. And that's what we got to do. We got to think about, even though we at the, we fought, we, we on the beginning process of us possibly sinning, we got to think about, right, the latter end of it. The latter end of it is death. Let's go to Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 34. The latter end of it is death, of you sinning. Even though it starts off with, in your mind, you are justified. You know what? I ain't had sex with my wife 
in a while now I am justified to commit adultery. I have not smoked uh, or used drugs, uh, but I had a long day at work. I had a, a stressful day at work. I am now justified to sin. That's what happens in our mind. Second Ezra chapter three, verse thirty-four. Come on. The book of Second Ezra chapter three and verse thirty-four. Yeah. Weigh that thou therefore are wickedness now in the balance. So this is Ezra talking to the angel, right? He's saying, "Look, compare our sin to the other nations' sin. Come on." And theirs also that dwell in the world. Uh -huh. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. So that's what we do as a people. A lot of times we want to compare ourselves to other people. We want our, uh, everything to be the same across the board. Guess what? The other nations and them sinning, you don't, you don't worry about that. Right? You focus on yourself. You examine and be mindful of yourself and your triggers and stop trying to worry about what everybody else is doing. But a lot of times, that's what lead brothers and sisters to sin. They want to look over there and see what everybody else is doing. The other nations are doing this, and they don't get punished for it. Why? We got to be so restricted in keeping the commandments of God. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 2 and verse 3. We want to always compare ourselves to everybody else. And that's another big problem with us as a people. Like, we cannot worry about the other nations. Focus on us. We are the children, the sons and daughters of God. We got to uphold the standards of keeping the commandments. Hold the line, right, like we say. But we're supposed to hold the line. Understand, holding that line means that you are the example of what right looks like all the time, regardless of what everybody else is doing. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2 and verse 3. Yeah. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, mm -hmm. yet acquainting my heart with wisdom. So he, he's leaning into wine, into alcoholism, and that can even go into different doctrines and learning about idols and stuff like that. He did all of that, but then he said, we well, did what now? Read it again. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, mm -hmm. and yet acquainting my heart with wisdom. But at the same time, he want to acquaint his heart with wisdom. Come on. And to lay hold on folly. And lay hold on folly. He want to know wisdom. He want to know folly. He want to be all in the wine and partying and reveling, doing all these different things. That, that, that's our people. That's us, right? We want to have one foot in the truth and the other foot in the world, right? Like the, like the Lord say, lukewarm. Instead of just being all the way focused on doing everything God requires you to do. You want to lean into those triggers. You want to lean into the things that make you comfortable when difficult things happen throughout your life. Come on, let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways mm -hmm. and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Mm -hmm. And walk therein. So instead, what we want to do a lot of time, like I said, we want to lean and worry about what everybody else is doing instead of learning from these negative attributes. You learn from those things. You say, you know what? They did that wrong. I can I can do better here. And you're supposed to learn from people's mistakes and not make them yourself. Proverbs 25, verse 28. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 28. Yeah. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So that's what we got to do. We got to get rule over our own spirit. We got to worry about ourself. Worry about ourself. And once we worry about ourselves, we can move forward as a nation, right? Let's look at some things we can do to kind of overcome uh, these triggers that cause us to sin. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except you be reprobate. So you got to prove your own self, meaning what? When difficult things happen, you got to say, am I going to make the right choice or the wrong choice? Right? When these different things that are triggering you happen, what choices can and should you make? Let's see the first one you should make. Malachi 3 and verse 16. This is the first choice you should make when these different things and these triggers are happening. Come on. The book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 16. Yeah. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. So that's what you're supposed to do. If you fear the Lord, the first step or one of the first things you can do in order to prevent yourself from being triggered is talk to your brothers, right? Sisters, talk to your sisters. These different things will keep you safe from that lust, 
from that whatever it might be, from whatever that sin that might be triggering you, whatever that stress might be, because you got to be able to vent. You got to be able to get certain things out, right? You're having a tough time at home with your spouse. You got to be able to talk to somebody about it. And that'll help you to not be fully engulfed in that rudiment, to not be fully triggered for you to now commit fornication because your spouse has upset you. For you to not fully lean into the rudiment or be triggered because work was stressful. Now I have the right to go uh, revel, to go drink, to go smoke. I have those, ex- you, you put those excuses in you, but what you can do is you can start communicating with brothers and or sisters. Let's go to Sirach chapter 33 and verse 27. That's one of the solutions you got, Israel. Communicate with your brothers, sisters. Communicate with your sisters. Come on. The book of Sirach. Chapter 33 and verse 27. Yeah. Send him to labor that he be not idle, mm. for idleness teacheth much evil. So you can't be idle, right? What you also can do, and I, I know I spoke about this before, is you get you a planner, be organized, and make sure you are busy, right? Make sure you are doing the things that, like the, the bishop got things in place, right? You can read four chapters a day, right? That's working yourself out spiritually, right? Go work out, do a jog or something. Right. That'll keep you busy physically. Right. And mentally, spiritually and physically. You want to make sure you're doing all those things, fulfilling yourself up. That way you don't have time to lean into those triggers. Right. Let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 23, verse two and three. Book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 2. Yeah. Who will set scourges over my thoughts? So the who that's going to set scourges over your thoughts, Israel, is you. You set those scourges over your thoughts. You be the example. You stop waiting for somebody else to be the example of the man or the woman that you want to be, and you be that example. Let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. The who is going to be you. You going to set the example. You going to set scourges over yourself. You going to do something called self-discipline. Come on, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Yeah. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So the, the Holy Spirit, if you're saying you holy, you saying you're keeping the commandments of God, guess what? You're supposed to be disciplined. That's what you're supposed to be. Let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 14, Israel. We're going to close it out right here. Romans 13 and verse 14. The, the Holy Spirit is about discipline. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. Yeah. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. and make not provisions for the flesh Mm. to fulfill the lust thereof. So you don't want to make provisions for yourself. You don't want to allow yourself to to when you see those triggers, you see those different things that are leading you down the road to sin. You want to get ahead of those things. Right. Communicate with your brothers and or sisters. Right. Be organized. Plan ahead and bleed and create self-discipline. Read your four chapters a day, Israel. With that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.